We'll get started. I'm David Anderman. Uh, I'm not part of Fines, though I have some dealings with them. It uh, looks like Rick won't be here. I'll be filling in. Uh, because I'm not officially associated with the Fines, anything I tell you may or may not be actually correct. And I certainly wouldn't uh, bank on what I tell you. But I will give you what I do know about Fines or what I have heard about the Fines. Uh, FINE stands for the Foundation for the International Non-Governmental Development of Space. It is a private organization, private foundation. It's not an operational organization. It doesn't have a big administrative staff. And there is some, uh, there is an impact on that, which I'll get to a little bit later. FINE was kicked off as, a, uh, as an organization in November of 1996 as the Space Frontier Foundation's uh, fifth annual Space Development Conference. Uh, they hosted a very nice reception, and at that reception, they announced their first prize, which was a hunt uh, for an Earth impactor asteroid. Uh, the philosophy behind FINES is somewhat unusual in that they really focus on technologies which are going to be privately developed. Uh, they have seen the uh, operators of FINES see space as historically being the domain of the government, and they're doing their bit to change that. Uh, what's unusual about FINES is that unlike a lot of organizations that uh, talk about uh, funding such efforts, they really do have money behind them. The initial FINES announcement uh, alluded to a $7 million fund. Since 1996, the value of the fund has gone up to the point that between cash and investments, they now have $13 million in the bank, which is a sizable chunk of change. Over the last couple of years, they have announced a few small disbursements of that money for certain, for several projects. I understand that Harrison Schmidt has received an award, uh, some funding for his work on Helium-3. I understand that Buzz Aldrin has received some funding for an operation called ShareSpace, which I believe will be presented here at the conference. Uh, there have been some other uh, researchers who have received uh, money for funding. And the intent is, it's a, sort of like a private SBIR program in which private uh, entities receive money and then they're expected to translate that into commercial operations downstream. Uh, the particular effort that I'm associated with finds is a, is a rocket prize, which I presented to them and ultimately was awarded $300,000 uh, to be awarded for the first private space launchers. Uh, because FINES is not operational, they really can't handle proposals as such. It's a very informal uh, process by which they decide to give funding. Uh, the last thing that they want is to be hit tomorrow with a stack of proposals. The best way to approach fines is to talk to Rick Tumblinson. Don't give him a proposal. Don't say, I need a million dollars. But just to talk informally with Rick, as you see him, about uh, your, your ideas and how ultimately they can be used to benefit the, the commercialization of space. Really, the, uh, the people behind fines are interested in such things as uh, use of asteroids. In fact, at one point, uh, in their initial announcement, they were talking about ultimately at some point being able to, to move asteroids in orbit as, for the purpose of extracting minerals and, and bringing wealth to Earth. Uh, they're also talking about transporting uh, uh, icebergs at some point. One of the companies associated with fines called Iceberg Transport Inc. Uh, but anything that can be used to leverage uh, co true commercial development of space they are interested in. Uh, that's really all I have about fines. I'm curious if anyone has any questions. Yes? As I said, it's informal. Uh, if Rick were here, he would say, get a hold of me, let me know what your process, and if he thinks it's worthy, he would take it to the fines board, he would review it. But again, they're not an operational entity. The, the board, for example, are people who are very busy, and they, they really don't have time to look at, look at these at weighty proposals. Rick will be here over the weekend. But again, he's not going to be hoping, he does not want to leave this con 
leave this conference with a stack of, uh, of weighted proposals. Are there any other questions about finance? I've come close to exhausting what I know, so. What other prizes are efforts and those prizes? Really? Yeah. Uh, well, there is a, uh, apparently an award for a, uh, a diver who has developed a, a personal life support system that can be used in space. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is an award uh, for an asteroid search. That is my name, sorry. Carnegie Mellon? Oh, the Carnegie Mellon Robotics, yes, award to Red Whitaker. That's correct. Yes? Carolina, I prize, no, no, the, the rocket prize is the exception to the rule. In most cases, it's very much like an SBIR, in which the, the entity receives a cash grant for the purpose of conducting research. Alex, uh, Rick. Anybody know about the magnitude of these grants? Is there a range that, that we know anything about? Uh, the cash price to date has been the largest, but uh, to be honest, I wouldn't expect that 300000 is the upper limit. Yes. Uh, yeah, there there has been talk that the, if the Cats Prize is successful, that the next award would be an orbital system, uh, the first true commercial orbital system. Boy, that is beyond at this point beyond me. These are not loans. Typically, the grants are very much like an SBIR, in which you would get a cash grant for the purpose of conducting a study, but the intent is that there would be a commercial rationale for that particular project. Great. Hey, talk about the project uh, prize or something like yes. that. You know, that's really, we're not going to know until we get farther into the, the initial suborbital threats. We're not there yet with the suborbital threats. Mr. Mm -hmm. Paulson. Do we know when Rick is arriving? Yes, he has a presentation this evening. <laughs> and the expectation is that flying from the West Coast, he will be here for that presentation. I would be surprised if he walks in the door, so. There was a question in the back. Mr. Mellon. So is anybody close to winning that Cats Prize yet? I can't talk about that. Oh. Is Greg Allison close to winning? I can't talk about that. Uh, the reason I can't talk about it is that the dealings, uh, communications with the various teams are confidential until one of the teams makes a formal announcement of an impending launch. And at that point, it does become public information. And I can say that no team has made that announcement at this point. The Rocket Prize, and, I, and I'm not going to rehash too much the Rocket Prize because there is a workshop tomorrow specifically about the prize. Uh, but the Rocket Prize um, is, has uh, the time frame for the prize is for three years from so the initial announcement at November 8th, 1997, and the window closed November 8th in the year 2001. So if, the, if that money is not won by a team, it goes back to fines. It is a, there is a three-year window, and it was never our expectation that anybody was going to win the prize the first year. Uh, to be more specific, there are actually two prizes, the $50,000 prize to reach 120 kilometers, and then the big prize of uh, the full quarter million to reach 200 kilometers. And there have been no launches to date, nor any announcements. Yes? Can you say more about the airspace thing that Oh, again, these uh, the cats. Fines does not give prizes; they give grants. Share space. I really can't talk too much about it. In fact, uh, Ron just walked out the door. But my understanding of share space is it is essentially a means to use Visa card transactions, so that a Visa card owner would have a ride into space on the space shuttle, and the the grant to Buzz Aldrin and Ron Jones is to work the, the, the business plan to the point that, it can, that that business can take off. 
Any other questions about them? I would say that if you write it up, uh, uh, perhaps a totally fleshed out business plan wouldn't be required, but something that's easily digestible by people who are really, really busy. Uh, well, I'd say you need more than a page. You, you have to, it's, it's a question of writing skill at that point, uh, how, how, how concisely you can package your plan. I mean, if you give them 50 pages, mm, Rick said, don't write anything uh, I've actually wrote a, a short piece for Rick that he could pass along. And that seemed to prove successful. But losing Rick, go for it. Just don't, just don't drop 50 proposals on it. And again, it's, the, the emphasis here is on non-governmental development of space. So, uh, yeah, you don't want to be a better government contractor. That can't be your business plan. Right off the first uh, business plan I've ever seen is just take a look at McDonald's and take a napkin out and sketch it out right there. I've been mean, involved in a couple of business plans that worked out quite well. <laughs> okay. Yes, Jeff. Uh, as far as I understand, it is Rick, it is uh, Walt Anderson, and Gus Garlini. That may be outdated information at this point, but I believe they are the original board. And again, fines is not an operational entity. There is no fines office. There is no, uh, the, the telephone number for fines that was published in Scientific American in December, told free line, actually goes to my house. So it's not fine to tell them. Do you get any calls on that card? God almighty. <laughs> <laughs> I think phone calls from Australia and New Zealand. Well, you should have seen it. It's tremendous. Uh, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, uh, Scientific American published an article in their December issue describing the, the, the Katz Prize, which is also known as the Fines Prize, describing the parameters of the, of the contest as was known in September of that year, which are a little different from the actual uh, prize itself, as it turned out. But they happened to publish the total free number of fines, describing it as, a, as I've described it. And boy, did we get a lot of telephone calls. And it happened that the telephone number they published was my number. Is it like registered team competitors like the XPRIZE, where you have identified groups that send in an application and become part of the, the official uh, program? Well, and, I, and as I said earlier, I don't want to go too much into, into the Cats Prize because there's going to be a workshop tomorrow. But just as a, for the perspective of, of those people who, who really aren't involved in it, the initial intent was not to have a list of competitors published on the basis of they say they're competitive. The intent was to keep things pretty much in the QT until the team was ready to go, and then they would be public. The competitors since have asked that they do, in fact, be listed, but there's no formal process. You don't have to be a real team to be listed. We have a web page, but uh, we're, we're not asking the teams to pay us to be listed. And you can see on the page itself, we list, for example, how, how high the teams have launched in the past. And you can see there's some teams who have never launched a rocket. Now, the, the, the other prize that's out there, apparently they require that the competitors pay money to be listed but there's no requirement that they demonstrate that they're real either. So apparently there are some teams that are using UFO technology on the Cats Prize, on the next prize. I don't know if they're real or not. All right, are there any other questions about the Pines Prize? If not, we are adjourned. Thank you.